Hello, my name is Ashley Taberge, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Washington and a Beckman Young Investigator awardee. I'd love to have a chance to share with you my research as a Beckman Young Investigator, as well as to talk about how Dr. Arnold O. Beckman's legacy has impacted me in my scientific journey. I love this quote from Dr. Beckman, and I'll read it right now. I have done more for science in general by making instruments available for thousands to use than what I could do in my laboratory by myself. I think this quote really sort of exemplifies Dr. Beckman's legacy um, and virtually all scientists who work in a wet lab have worked with an instrument that Dr. Beckman invented from a pH meter to a spectrometer. Um, his quote also embodies a really important value for my group's research, which is making instruments and methods available to others. And so as we design methods and some of them I'll highlight in this video, we really think about making them user-friendly and also manufacturable so that we can get the techniques out of our lab and into the hands of others where the impacts of our work can be multiplied. Dr. Beckman also believes strongly in training the next generation of scientists. And I'd really like to thank the um, Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation for their support of our research, which has allowed us to train over 50 scientists in my research group over the last six years. I think at least 40 of them were trained during my time as a Beckman Young Investigator. So without the support of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation, this training would not have been possible. Another area um, of being a Beckman Young Investigator awardee that's really been impactful in terms of my mentoring and training of students is the ability to interact with others at the yearly Beckman Symposia and to learn from other PIs uh, tips and, and techniques for mentoring and taking their science in a new direction. And so I think that the interactions with other Beckman Young Investigators have also been important in helping prepare me to be a leader in science. Further to this discussion of um, Dr. Beckman's uh, values of, for training the next generation, I also wanted to highlight that we have a, a large number of undergraduate researchers in my research group. At the moment, we have, I think, at least 15 undergraduate researchers. And so again, thanks to the Beckman Foundation, um, the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation for making this possible. So now I'd like to take you on a little journey through my Beckman funded project. I won't be able to tell you all the details, of course, because this is a brief highlight video, but um, the project was divided into two areas, developing a novel technique for 3D patterning hydrogels with open microfluidics and developing uh, a method that we call stacks for uh, reconfigurable cultures. And I'll mostly focus on the first of these two methods. So just as a brief overview of the technique, um, we envisioned being able to use guides. And so you can see here, this uh, Y-shaped device is a guide to guide the flow of hydrogels in liquid form before they've gelled. We would then remove the guide, and then this would reveal a patterned hydrogel layer. I really want to highlight um, that this hydrogel patterning method is different from existing 3D printing methods, um, fundamentally different because it uses surface tension forces instead of extrusion or light-based methods that are used for most uh, 3D printers on the market today. And so using this novel patterning technique and this entirely different method for doing the patterning allows us to pattern materials that aren't um, printable with 3D printers that are on the market today and may someday lead to the um, development and invention of an entirely new form of 3D printer. Here's a video that shows the uh, surface tension guided flow in action. And you can see this is taken from the bottom of a well plate looking up. So a student has just pipetted gel into this device. I won't go into the details of the math here, but I did put the equations um, on this slide sort of to honor uh, Dr. Beckman's um, strong appreciation for fundamentals and how fundamentals in chemistry can guide the development of new methods. With our technique, we're able to pattern different materials across layers. And so you can see here um, different colored gels as a, a model to show different patterning um, across layers. This could be to pattern a tissue, for example, for tissue engineering applications or for cell culture aimed at biomedical applications where you need to have different cell types in each layer. We're also able to pattern structures making multi-material printing across a layer. 
or sorry, within a layer, which is actually more challenging than the um, printing that I showed you on the previous slide with different gels across layers. Finally, we showed that we're able to form hollow structures, which is particularly challenging because many of these layers are cantilevered out in space over the layers below. And finally, here I show an example of a degradable gel. So we're in this case able to pattern not only in space, but also in time, hence the 4D printing um, in, this, uh, in this title here. And this is uh, greatly applicable to tissue engineering applications. And this is work that we conducted in collaboration with Cole DeForest's group in chemical engineering at the University of Washington, an interaction that was also made possible by um, Beckman funded conference travel for one of my trainees, um, Amanda Hack. Looking forward, um, I wanted to highlight a few areas where our research is going to have an impact on human health. One of our projects involves advancing the understanding of cell signaling in asthma and understanding how patient specific signaling mechanisms and pathways might affect the outcomes in asthma patients, which will ultimately enable us to work with others to develop drugs that target um, pathways on a patient specific basis. We're working also to apply this research in other tissues, such as the testis, looking at male infertility and um, ways to treat male infertility, as well as the kidney, understanding toxicity and other impacts in the kidney. So I wanted to also, again, um, close by talking about our trainees that have been funded by this uh, BYI funded project. Uh, Dr. Beckman said, hire the best people and then get out of their way. And I think um, the, the students on this team have been phenomenal, and I'm just delighted to share with you where they're going now in their careers. Two of our undergraduates funded on my BYI project are now PhD students. John Day is at MIT, and Wembo Liu is at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, Dr. Yuri Lee was a PhD student in my group funded on this project who has now graduated, and she's on to a postdoc at MIT starting in the fall. Amanda Hack was funded on a, um, an F30 by the National Institutes of Health, and she's an MD-PhD student in my group who will be um, obtaining her PhD and returning to med school shortly. And here's a picture of some of us at the Gordon Conference on Microfluidics in Hong Kong in 2019, again, presenting our um, Beckman-funded work. Again, I'd like to thank the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation for making all of this research possible and also for funding the group members uh, in their training process and to become the scientists of the future. Thank you.